My name is Chris McKinney, and I'm the director of the Pediatric Sickle Cell and Hemoglobinopathy Program at Children's Hospital Colorado. Today we will be discussing exciting new transformative and potentially curative therapy options for patients with beta globin disorders such as thalassemia and sickle cell disease. Beta globin is a component of normal adult hemoglobin and is produced by the HBB gene located on chromosome 11. It is a primary type of non-alpha globin produced after patients undergo fetal hemoglobin switching around three months of age. Patients with beta thalassemia have a mutation in the HBB gene, which produces a reduced amount of beta globin, resulting in imbalanced globin chain production, ineffective erythropoiesis, and decreased red cell survival. Patients who have homozygous or compound heterozygous thalassemia mutations may have lifelong transfusion dependence and require chelation therapy for iron overload. Patients with sickle cell disease, on the other hand, have a single amino acid substitution in the beta globin gene, resulting in production of normal quantities of a mutant beta globin, which forms long, insoluble polymers, distorting the shape of red blood cells and leading to chronic hemolytic anemia, intermittent episodes of vasoocclusion, and end organ damage. The hallmark complication is unpredictable, recurrent, and disabling vasoocclusive pain crises. This is a life-limiting disorder with a life expectancy about 20 years shorter than patients without sickle cell disease. Allogeneic stem cell transplant has been an excellent curative therapy option for patients with severe sickle cell disease since first performed about 40 years ago. Unfortunately, this therapy has traditionally been limited by the lack of an available matched related donor, poor unrelated donor options due to racial disparities, and historically unacceptably high rates of graft rejection or graft versus host disease in alternative donor transplant. Although this is changing in the modern era with improvements in haploidentical transplant with administration of post-transplant cyclophosphamide. This is the impetus for development of autologous gene therapies for patients with beta globin disorders. These therapies eliminate donor availability and graft versus host disease concerns because a patient serves as their own stem cell donor. This is an overview of the autologous gene therapy process. First, patients undergo stem cell mobilization by administering either plurixophore for patients with sickle cell disease or GCSF and plurixophore for patients with thalassemia and then collecting the peripheral blood stem cells via apheresis. This occurs over several days and may require multiple cycles over the course of one to three months to collect enough cells. Secondly, the stem cells are sent from manufacturer, either by lentiviral transduction or CRISPR gene editing, so that they have increased expression of non-sickling hemoglobins, a process which may take about three months. Once manufacturing is complete, the patient is admitted to the hospital for myeloblative chemotherapy with busulfan to eliminate the patient's old stem cells and prepare them to receive the manufactured stem cells. The stem cells are infused through a central venous catheter and the patient remains in the hospital for an additional three to four weeks until neutrophil engraftment occurs. At Children's Hospital Colorado, we are excited to be a designated qualified treatment center for the three gene therapy products currently approved by the FDA for patients with thalassemia or sickle cell disease. This is a table summarizing the therapies we are currently able to offer to qualifying patients. Zinteglo and Lifgenia are lentiviral vector products for beta thalassemia and sickle cell disease respectively, in which a gene is inserted which makes a mutated anti-sickling adult hemoglobin called hemoglobin A T87Q. Alternatively, CASGEVI employs a CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing strategy to alter the erythroid-specific enhancer of BCL11A which is a repressor of fetal hemoglobin production. Reduced BCL11A expression leads to increased production of non-sickling fetal hemoglobin. In clinical trials, these therapies have appeared to be safe and highly effective at inducing transfusion independence in patients with thalassemia and eliminating severe vaso-occlusive events and hospitalizations in about 90% of patients after infusion. It is important to acknowledge the limitations of these therapies. These still require myeloblative chemotherapy, and patients may experience both short-term and long-term side effects from this alkylator exposure, including infertility. And for patients with sickle cell disease, we do not have data about long-term effects of these treatments on development of end organ damage or in patients with certain underlying comorbidities or prior disease-related complications. Continued long-term follow-up with a sickle cell disease specialist will be needed. 
While this therapy may not be the right choice for every patient with sickle cell disease or thalassemia, it is an important tool in the arsenal of developing therapies for these patients who for many years have had limited options. We are pleased to be able to help provide access to these novel therapies to patients throughout Colorado and the Rocky Mountain region. If you are interested in more information or would like to refer a patient for consultation, please do not hesitate to reach out and email bmt at childrenscolorado.org.